couple months ago, I had occasion to sample the best meal I have ever had in my life. I've told some of you about this. My uncle bought a table of 12 for his wife's 80th birthday, and it was a fundraiser at a silent auction, and the table of 12 was a meal that was prepared by Canada's Culinary Olympic team. This group gathers together once or twice or three times a year for three years to prepare a meal that they will then present at the Culinary Olympics in Stuttgart, Germany in March of 2020. And they are competing against 46 countries with the best chefs in the world. We had executive chefs from all over the country, from Halifax to Vancouver, everything in between, and the meal was amazing. And I wanted to share the news of this meal. And I was taking pictures, and they said, you can't tell anyone. I was like, what? It's a competition. They didn't want the information to get out what they were going to be serving. So I could take pictures, and I could rant and rave to myself and, and to you now. I can't tell you what it was, but I can tell you it was amazing. And look on my Facebook page in April after we win, and I'll post the pictures. <laughs> I wanted to plaster it everywhere. And I wonder if the meal that was prepared in our scripture today was anything like that. If you have ever been to a wedding, that is over the top, that has a reception for hundreds. Maybe you've got 12 courses, and it seems the food goes on and on and on. You know what I mean. And I wonder if the meal that this man prepared for his son's wedding was like that. And if so, why weren't people going? I mean, it would be amazing, it would be great. Wouldn't you want to tell everybody about it? Wouldn't you want to plaster it all over Facebook that you got that kind of an invitation, that there was that kind of meal waiting for you? Because, let's think about this. If you have something really good, like a meal or Kit Kat bars, you want to share it. You want to be generous with it. It's one of the first things kids learn in kindergarten, all about sharing what we have with others. When my son was little, he quickly learned that if he wanted a chocolate from the box on the sideboard, he would take it down and he would share it with all the guests because then he knew he'd get one. He's not smart. He's not that, you know, he's pretty good. And I wonder, is our friendship, our relationship with Jesus something so special that we want to share? Share that joy, share that love and that grace and that peace. We can do that, you know, we, we can, but, but only if you want to. And sometimes I wonder if we want to. I wonder if speaking about our faith in the world has been something that we're just uncomfortable doing. But it is special, and I wonder why we won't want to share our sumptuous, bountiful feast of hope with people in the world. We have the most amazing meal right here. It looks simple, but it is the most extravagant, most gentle and generous meal that you will ever have. Jesus Christ, body and blood. This meal that we will celebrate today is the promise of eternal life. Is there anything better than that? Is there anything more generous than that? But we don't seem to talk about it much in our world. But I think we should be. We should be sharing this amazing meal, not just physically, but mentally and spiritually, sharing this amazing news with anyone who will listen. And yeah, there's going to be people who say, no thanks, and that's okay. 
because it is our excitement and our wondrous hope that we want to share. And if people don't want to hear about it, that's okay. But we should want to. We should want to plaster it all over Facebook. We should want to give everyone this gift of eternal life. Someone once said to me, you know what, we have the best commodity anyone could ever have, but we do an awful job of marketing it. We're not paying attention, we're not sharing. The king sent his servants into the streets to find people for the banquet, to share the great feast. He went to his friends first, but you know what? Sometimes that happens. We go to friends first, and they want to have nothing to do with it because you know what? They've heard us before. And sometimes we have to go a little further afield. You may not realize it, but in this place, in this time, you have been called by God. You have been called from ordinary lives to this place precisely because God knows you and God knows how your life will be changed by knowing him. God knows that you have the gifts needed to share the word of God. Each of you has a different gift. You have what is necessary to make this church a place in God's community, in God's world. You've been called, yes, each of you, to share the wonders of God, knowing that we all differ in our experience, in our differences, in our backgrounds, in our biases, but we are all invited to share our faith out in the world. And yes, sometimes it starts here, where we are touched by God. And then we are told to go out and offer that Christ to the world, to communicate it outside our doors. We have this amazing opportunity in this place to tell people about this amazing man. We just have to to get them in here. We have to get them in here and then we have to go out. It's not a strictly in, it's not a strictly out, it's this and that. Learning about God, sharing the word of God, sharing this amazing banquet. If we could tell just one person what making a difference as a Christian has made in your lives, would you? And if it hasn't made a difference, we failed you. We have failed you because it has to. And if it does, and if it has, what keeps us from sharing our story? I wonder sometimes if we are afraid that we need to hoard it, that somehow God's love and God's grace and God's mercy is, is just enough for us and it's gonna run out so we, we better not give too much of it away. But we know that's not the truth. That eternal feast is for everyone. Or maybe you find it easier not to talk about our faith. Maybe we haven't realized that someone needs to hear it. Can you think of one person that doesn't need to know that they are loved unconditionally? I don't think there is a person on this planet that doesn't need to know that. Pope Francis said, instead of seeming to impose new obligations, Christians should appear as people who wish to share their joy, who point to a horizon of beauty, and who invite others to a delicious banquet. It is not by proselytizing the church grows, but by attraction. We should be happy to share with others the fact that there is someone that is available, 
always, to walk with them, to talk with them, and yes, to love them unconditionally. How attractive is that? We're not talking about sharing this necessarily in great hordes, but one by one by one by one, like the early Christians did. They didn't go out necessarily all the time to preach. What they did is they made a difference and an impact in people's lives by telling them about Jesus Christ. We're not going to change the world by proselytizing, by Bible thumping, by shouting it from the street corners. We're going to change the world by sharing the love of Jesus Christ with anyone who'll listen. This amazing banquet of joy and love and peace and acceptance is for everyone. What a gift, what a privilege it is that we can share the wonders of God with anyone. Yes, with friends and family and coworkers, certainly. But if they won't listen, like those first people invited to the banquet, we go out to the highways and the byways. We speak to people who are peripheral in our lives and we share what a difference it's made for us. And you know what? Sometimes we find even that uncomfortable. But if we say to folks, you know what? Come with me to church one day. It's not as scary as you think it is. And here we can make a difference. Each of us has a part to play, a role to fill, a job to do. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about how we work together as a family of faith. How we work together as a church alongside God to do God's will in this world. Seeing how God works in us and through us and through us and as a church, pardon me, to do his will on earth, we can come to the banquet of grace and peace and love. And more than that, we can share the banquet in this place where everyone is welcome. This is not St. Giles' table. It's not the PCC's table. It's not the Christian table. It's God's table for anyone and everyone. Because the parable of the wedding banquet is not a story of exclusion, but inclusion. It's about everyone being welcome at the table, no matter our color, our language, our ethnicity, our gender, our abilities, our challenges. Everyone. This passage is entitled, Inviting the Misfits. But Jesus didn't see it that way. Jesus didn't see color or race or gender or ethnicity or abilities or challenges. He sees us as we are and invites us to his banquet, to his feast. He doesn't want anything to separate us, ever. Paul writes, For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our faith can break down every barrier, include everyone, but only if we're going to share it. And sharing isn't for the experts, and, and I point to myself because that's what people think. You're the expert, you do it. It's for all of us to do in our own wonderful way. God never waits till people are experts before asking them to share their faith. You can make a difference just by being you. Just by being the person that God created you to be. By sharing your faith in the way that is natural and normal for you by sharing this amazing banquet because you simply can't not share it. We, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. We are called 
into discipleship. We are challenged to let our faith and our passion be seen and felt. We are invited to rejoice in the wonders of God. And we are called to share the story of Christ and his love for us with the world. We are invited to speak peace. We are called to share the banquet with everyone. Amen. Our hymn is number 534.